Cyclone Freddy inland over Madagascar on tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. And now the latest around the wide world of tropics. Tropical Weather Bulletin for February 22nd. Cyclone Freddy still the main feature inland over Madagascar after making landfall in the evening hours of the 21st of February. Moving into the 22nd, the storm will continue to press across the Madagascan main island, of course, and then out over Mozambique, uh, the Mozambique Channel, I should say, towards the country of Mozambique. 99 days until Atlantic hurricane season and thankfully still nothing major to track right now but a frontal system there uh, pushing through a very broad line of showers and the odd uh, bit of severe weather there as well in the United States there. We've marked an area of interest in the Australian region, a 10% chance for a system that might develop towards the end of the five day period and head towards the Gulf of Carpentaria. Currently it's located towards the western region near Derby and will eventually move towards the east. In the South Indian Ocean proper, we have an 80% chance of development for this system. If you've been watching it closely, it has been gradually rising in those chances and will probably be a short-lived tropical storm as it heads southwestwards but, will shouldn't, but shouldn't affect the Masserine Islands. Cyclone Freddy down to Category 1 status after making a borderline Category 2 slash 3 landfall in Madagascar and there it is still moving over land with winds of 90 miles per hour that's around 140 145 kilometers per hour sustained. Check the satellite imagery and look out for any red zones, especially in the tropics there. You can see Freddy making landfall in Madagascar on that image there. A few little specks of red of Northern Australia as well with that area of interest already. That's causing a lot of rainfall in some areas along the coast, but generally uh, rainfall amounts aren't too crazy around the world. Here is the satellite imagery of how freddy has been looking. You can see what happened just as it made landfall. The eye was really starting to struggle once it did that. Here it is on a more slower imagery and enhanced infrared. You can see the eye built back just a little bit as it was making landfall. And then since then it's been as expected, a quick waning away of the storm's structure. The eastern and northern side is holding on best, with the western and southern sides really starting to struggle in those latest frames. The storm is likely to weaken all the way down to tropical depression status according to latest forecasts, before ramping up in intensity again in the very warm Mozambique channel. Even rapid intensification can't be ruled out as it makes its way towards hopefully its final landfall in southern Mozambique. Certainly a risk over there though uh, for potential hurricane equivalent landfall landfall still uh, but particularly for heavy rainfall and that's something we'll be looking at on the models in just a moment but there it is when it made its landfall there borderline category 2 slash 3 a fairly strong landfall as it plowed into the coast of Madagascar sea surface temperatures around the world first of all the Pacific Ocean towards the east Temperatures up to around 27 degrees Celsius off the coast of Pacific Mexico. In the Atlantic, getting up to around 26 degrees Celsius there, but certainly not in any shape to have a tropical cyclone there yet. The Arabian Sea up to around 27 degrees and in the Bay of Bengal around 27 to 28 as well. Looking to the southwest Indian Ocean, this is where conditions are really warm in the Mozambique Channel, pushing 30 degrees Celsius off the coast of Mozambique. In the rest of the ocean there, uh, still decent temperatures, 26 to 27 degrees Celsius, which is round about what's needed. Towards the coast of Australia, very warm waters pushing 31 degrees Celsius in some areas there and very warm temperatures all around that northern coast pushing 29 to 30. Into the Coral Sea, warm temperatures persist, 28 degrees Celsius, a little bit cooler down near New Caledonia, around Vanuatu 27 to 28 and over Fiji 28 to 29. Into the Western Pacific, temperatures are looking good in those deep tropical zones, 28 degrees Celsius, a little bit cooler further north, but as we've mentioned a few times before, those warm waters already extend as far north as Luzon in the Philippines. 
Um, these are the anomalies. You can see that the Western Pacific there and the oranges, they're above average, but quite a few blue areas de developing in the Central Pacific there. And just check that Indian Ocean there too. You can pretty much see the track of Freddy etched in now with a big blue line across the Southern Indian Ocean. So the Freddy effect might be there for a little while. Near Fiji, warm sea temperatures compared to average there as well. And Australia, it's around hit and miss. Oceanic heat content looks like this, anywhere in the turquoise really and onwards is good for uh, storms to give them a boost with some extra energy and depth in those sea surface temperatures. Oceanic heat content still looking good for the western Pacific as well, not far from Guam with those oranges just holding on a little bit more. Well, let's get on to the GFS model run then, and this is what we have in store for the next five days. So you can see Freddy moving out over the Mozambique Channel, strengthening again, nearing hurricane equivalent status as it makes landfall in southern um, Mozambique and then towards the southwest, and it just uh, capitulates really, but there's a lot of windy conditions that remain from the remnants. And on the right-hand side, there's that other tropical system. It might make a go towards hurricane equivalent status. It's a, It could be a compact small quickly intensifying storm but it won't last very long ultimately and will miss land Australian region look out for potentially two systems on the GFS run although the eastern one that's marked there near Fiji uh, doesn't have any other models supporting it the one near Australia is starting to get a bit more model support and that's why we've marked a 10% but you can see on the GFS at least that both of them form but I'm certainly more interested in the Australian one that starts to develop properly once it's over the Gulf of Carpentaria. There it is, spinning a little bit more towards the end of that five day period and then onto the east coast of the Gulf of Carpentaria. Look towards the precipitation then in Madagascar and in Southern Africa. Uh, we are looking now according to the forecast of this, the remnants of the storm stalling over the southern part of Mozambique and on towards South Africa, onto Eswatini and parts of Zimbabwe. Uh, but in Madagascar, first of all, we could be looking at maybe five inches of rainfall on top of what's already occurred so far. That would be around 125 millimeters. And you can see near Beira there, we're looking at maybe 12 inches of rain still, 300 millimeters. And that's from the precursor, not the precursor, but the outer edges of the storm, because the storm itself moves further south. And look at those rain amounts not far from the capital Maputo now. 17 inches in some areas there. That's a very high amount of rain, especially that far south. That's pushing 400, more than that, 400 millimeters in total. Into the longer range, day 5 to 10, you can see both of these cyclones are actually on a collision course there, but it's the eastern one that wins out in the end and becomes a significant cyclone just passing east of New Caledonia. Now once again, this isn't really supported by the other models at the moment, so it is feasible that it could be the western system that takes uh, precedent in reality, but the GFS showing that strong cyclone there getting to category 3 status near New Caledonia and then moving on towards New Zealand which could get yet another storm impact. That's all the serious stuff done though. You can scan that barcode on top right and take a look at the Force 13 merch store and our usual items as well as our still waiting for Hone t-shirt because we certainly are still waiting. You can also take a look at our full season and individual storm animations bespoke to your liking. In the silly range, and we call it that because it's very uh, far out and I wouldn't put much faith in this at all yet, but a North Indian Ocean storm, GFS has been forecasting this in various different capacities, and there it is getting to category one or two status and making straight for Myanmar, moving northeastwards pretty much from formation there near Sri Lanka, and then continuing pretty much on that path all the way up. That's quite unusual, uh, but certainly the time of year is also unusual to see something like that We'll have to wait and see. That will be the first week of March. And down once again in the Australian region, maybe another system forming in the Coral Sea after that event first event occurs and an enormous tropical cyclone affecting Queensland there. That would be a serious storm, certainly for its wide ranging impacts more than for its intensity. Uh, but that once again is very far out. That's beyond 10 days, getting towards 16. Uh, so I wouldn't worry about that one at all yet, but keep watching those forecast charts. 
and you can discuss all of that on our Discord server. Weather and everything to do with it, whether it's tropical or polar or wherever you are around the world, we've got people there. Discord.gg slash force13 to join our community. Well, what happened on this day, and it's quite ironic that it was on this day that Cyclone Leonilene, the most comparable storm to Freddy, made landfall in Mozambique as a powerful Category 4 storm. Look at that satellite image. Officially 130 miles per hour, but you might want to argue, looking at that image there, that it was probably a bit stronger. Cyclone Felicia was also active and would become a Category 1 storm later in the day, and it would peak at that intensity. Leonilene also reaching its peak intensity there, its ultimate peak, as it made landfall in Mozambique. Back to this year and in the Atlantic once we start up hurricane season the first name on the list is Arlene in the Eastern Pacific Adrian and in the Central Pacific it is still Hone and it has been for nearly four years now. In the Western Pacific the next name on the list is Sanvu and in the North Indian Ocean it would be Mocha for the first named storm of the year. Eight have formed so far around the world, although if you wanted to count storms by average ace, we're probably up to about 15. Freddy accounts for seven different storms or something like that. Australian region, next up is Herman, Southwest Indian Ocean, Inala, and in the South Pacific, it's Judy. That's all from tonight's Tropical Weather Bulletin. We'll be back again tomorrow night.